Carson Newman, how I love thee, alma mater, hail. Orange and blue, wave high above thee. Through the calm and Let me tell you a Carson Newman story. You don't have to close your eyes, but do try to block out these buildings, these beautiful columns, and any traffic noise you may hear past me as I speak to you. And certainly try to block out the sounds around you as I speak with you. Here's the story. Consider this rolling hill that I'm on as it likely would have been in 1849, more than 160 years ago. It was a mixture of fields and trees. Mossy Creek was the name of the town then, changed in 1901 to Jefferson City. And about four blocks that way behind me in the old downtown area was the planned route of the coming East Tennessee and Virginia Railroad. Next to it would be located the Mossy Creek Train Depot which figures into our story. In front of me, just a half mile that way, on the next hilltop over there, behind the modern CVS pharmacy, was a community called Carsonville. There was another field on the next hill over there, plowed to grow a crop, though we cannot know exactly what had been planted on it that spring. And along the edge of that field was a tree, one of those great oak trees where you could find plenty of shade and where life seemed more pleasant and more relaxed. On a particular day in March of 1849, five men gathered there beneath its branches it was the end of the day, just a little while before twilight. That evening might have been relaxed, but we may assume that those five men who assembled there were not. They were interested, even animated, fueled by their abiding belief that Baptist believers needed to educate their young folk. Now certainly they were motivated by the prospect of educating preachers, particularly given the turbulent philosophical differences about education that had plagued the denomination for decades. But they wanted not only to provide a place that would teach preachers who would fill the pulpits, but also a school that would educate the people in the pews of those churches. This assemblage, which we here at Carson Newman now call the Oak Tree Five, carried on their conversation for hours. We should note as part of our story that these men were not the only people interested in providing a Baptist institution of higher education in this part of the state, but those five men are the reason that you and I are present on this campus today. The conversation about founding a school here had been going on for almost 10 years. In 1842, a group called the Baptist Education Society of East Tennessee had begun to send young men who wished to preach to East Tennessee University, now called the University of Tennessee. In early 1849, not many weeks before that meeting under the oak tree, the Baptist Education Society had gathered in Dandridge the next town to the south with the county's historic courthouse. And they gathered for the purpose of locating that long discussed school there in Dandridge. The Education Society elected 21 trustees and charged them to establish the new school. It seems that some people did not want the school in Dandridge, but hoped the institution would be located closer to the railroad. If this most modern means of transportation and its train station was coming here, then why not locate the school closer to it? 
And as the story goes, that was the topic of conversation that night in March in 1849. Within a year, the Oak Tree Five, the Reverend Nelson Bowen, Professor Robert Reedy Bryan, and three farmers, I. M. Newman, Samuel S. I. Newman, and William C. Newman, had secured two acres of land near the banks of Mossy Creek itself which of course runs beyond Burke Tar Stadium and the softball baseball fields. Before long, they had over $2,000 in pledges and things got into motion. And so about this very time in late summer, August 1851, just two and a half years after the Oak Tree Five had met, Mossy Creek Missionary Baptist Seminary would open for class gathering in the Baptist Meeting House located upstream near the zinc mine. In 1852, the Mossy Creek Seminary had its own building and things were on a roll. In 1855, a young man named Richard Scruggs would be the first graduate. He was a doctor. The second graduate was a lawyer. And the third was a minister. In 1855, the word seminary was dropped from the official name, and just three years later, the railroad was completed. Mossy Creek was a required stop on the rail line that ran from the East Coast to the expanding Indian Territory to the West. That's not all of our story and our history. In fact, it's far from it. For example, there are entertaining details about Carson College joining with Newman College. And there are many other interesting stories to tell. But you have four years to get to know much more about this place and its stories. These old overalls I'm wearing today did not belong to one of the Oak Tree Five. They actually belong to my grandfather Garner he died in 1952, and my father kept these old overalls as a memento. I wear them today as I speak to you for a particular reason. My grandfather was a farmer, like some of those Oak Tree Five. A farmer who really believed in the importance of education. In fact, so important was education to my grandfather that in 1920, he moved my father and his brothers and sisters, moved the family into town. They had lived on a river farm along the Chattahoochee River in Gwinnett County, Georgia. And Grandfather Garner decided to move them to town because there was a school there and he wanted his children to get an education. So, tagging along with his three older brothers and sisters, my father began school at age five. My dad never was able to attend college, though an intelligent man who loved learning. But he saw to it that his three sons received very good educations. And somewhat paralleling those first three graduates here at Mossy Creek, those three Garner grandsons lifted on the shoulders of earlier generations, became a doctor, a lawyer, and a minister. In my own family, my children each chose to attend Carson Newman College, and my wife returned to Carson Newman to complete her degree and to become a school teacher here in Jefferson County. But today we are most interested in your story what is the story that you are bringing as a new student to our campus? How has this stage of your journey been shaped by those who went before you? Like my grandparents and parents, your family and loved ones have made big commitments, some even to the point of great sacrifice, in order for you to be here today and to become a part of the Carson Newman story. To those who went before you on campus, we say thank you because they've opened up a way for you to grow here. 
Donors have built these buildings in which you will live and study. Faculty members have prepared themselves to give you the best education they can. Fellow students will help you to discover all that you can be in the days that you are here. What story will you be writing into your life's book over the years you spend on campus? From this gentle hillside, surrounded by the richness of history, I invite you to join fully into the Carson Newman story. How I love the alma mater hail, orange and blue wave high.